Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is escalating his political battle against Disney, Walt Disney World. Isn't that like one of their biggest employers in Florida? The mm, yeah, got it. yeah. And sort of what they do, <clears throat> tourism, right. At a news conference near Orlando yesterday, DeSantis outlined his next moves, vowing to nullify an agreement that allows the amusement park to circumvent his newly appointed state board. DeSantis then suggested the idea of developing land next to the park, which he says could include a state park, a rival amusement park, or even a state prison. Mm. He also floated the idea that the board could look into raising its tax rates, a move that would result in more costs for Disney. The feud started over a year ago after Disney came out against Florida's Parental Rights in Education bill, which banned classroom instruction about sexual orientation and gender identity in lower grades. DeSantis has since announced plans to expand the ban at, uh, to all grade levels, which doesn't require legislative approval. So we could have a conversation about that or about, I, I mean, ha talk about like stepping on a rake, getting in a fight with your largest employer. It's, it's also just, <clears throat> it's starting to get a little weird I yeah. mean, and feel a little personal, like, oh, if, deeply. you know, I mean, <laughs> deeply. I mean, you're in a fight basically with Mickey Mouse and it's like, why is this, why is this happening to you so personally? I mean, it is also strange because of course, DeSantis is trying to build his national profile. And it's a pretty odd way to do that by attacking Disney World, the, the destination, uh, the desired destination of all children in America. I mean, yeah. I don't really see Although how that the issues helps. in which why he's attacking them, Gene Robinson, is very um, appealing, I think, locally. But I thought mm -hmm. Ron DeSantis was working on a presidential campaign. Well, we thought so. He's not, he's not doing a very good job of it, to tell you the truth. And this is just weird. This obsession DeSantis has with having the last word over Disney. I mean, they, you know, Disney um, uh, did a, a maneuver that caught him flat-footed. Uh, he tried to put this board uh, in, in charge of, of Disney and Disney World, and, and they sort of maneuvered him in advance, and he didn't know about it, and, and so he's He's just fuming and steaming. But this says a lot about Ron DeSantis and mm -hmm. about, about, frankly, his unfitness uh, to even think about being president. I mean, can you imagine uh, trying to conduct foreign policy with this sort of grudge match uh, yeah. attitude, you know, toward uh, our, our adversaries or our allies or anybody who, who got under his very, very thin skin? This mm -hmm. is... It, this is, on the one hand, really, really worrisome about DeSantis, and it's also, like, really funny. It is the state's biggest employer. It is the place where every child in America wants to go. Why are you going to fight Mickey Mouse? This is just stupid. <laughs> Yeah. And, and Caddy, Bob Iger, who, who runs Disney, famously said a couple of weeks ago, this is an anti-business position. He said, we're about to spend, I think, $17 billion in the state over the next few years and hire 13,000 more people and all the things that Disney does. I mean, Joe has talked about this as a guy from Florida. I mean, Disney is Florida. Tourism is. is Florida. Uh, Universal, we throw in there as well. But, you know, Disney originally <laughs> Absolutely. was, of course, oh, right, yeah. America's well greatest I mean, theme park. You know, Without, without question. But, but this is just, yeah, Harry Potter, come on, go down the list. Yeah. But this is beyond bizarre, is it not, to have this icon of your state, this, this company, this business that brings billions and billions of dollars and tens of thousands of jobs to your state because your feelings were hurt on a position the company took on one issue, on one bill last year. Look, partly this is about Ron DeSantis, and I think it is starting to hurt him when you're st starting to see Republican donors who had been looking forward to supporting, said they'd been looking forward to supporting a DeSantis campaign, now saying, hold on a second, some of his positions, whether it's on, you know, uh, drag parades or whether it's on banning books or whether it's on taking on Disney, it's going too far, and they're now looking at him with a little bit more skepticism. So it's going to hurt Ron DeSantis personally, potentially, as a presidential candidate, but I think it says something something broader about the direction of the Republican Party, and Joe has mentioned this, you know, is, is the Republican Party oddly becoming the anti-business party, which is mm -hmm. flipping history on its head, exactly. and it's not just in Florida, you're seeing them do it in Texas too, where the Texas legislature is starting to enact 
uh, social conservative rulings that could have an impact on the way that businesses are able or want to operate in Texas. And, you know, Texas is a booming state, but the Republican Party, paradoxically, could be about to hold the state back economically just because businesses don't like the intervention. They don't want business. Businesses don't expect the Republican Party to intervene in the way they do business in the way that the Republican Party of today seems to be doing. And Mika, to further Caddy's point, it's the book bans, it's this fight with Disney, right. it's the restrictive abortion ban. This is right. Governor DeSantis as he's trying to build a national profile, How seemingly embracing policies and positions to that are aimed at a shrinking portion of the electorate. Certainly not enough to win nationally, and at the moment, not enough to win a nomination as he's sinking in the polls, donors are having second thoughts, Trump has opened exactly. up his lead. Meanwhile, he's also ignored issues in his own backyard. We were saying yesterday, the flooding in Fort Lauderdale, historic flooding My in recent God. days, never appeared. Santa's Whoa. never visited the site. That's amazing. And then, of course, the 11 p.m. tweet about the six-week abortion ban. I mean, it's just... It's a, it is an interesting tactic for someone who wants, who's got a book and has gone to New Hampshire and, you know, is seemingly wanting to run for president. Again, possibly what it appears to be is a losing proposition, but we shall see.